my video feed. This one I'm super excited about. This is the 2022 Hyundai Tucson, but this is the base model. And I love talking about base models in this class because let's face it, it's a compromise. And what you include and don't include is, has to hit a price point, has to hit a whole bunch of things. And they got this car just about perfect. Maybe one little issue I have with it. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We've already reviewed the top trim level, the Ultimate, uh, which is a hybrid. Love that vehicle. We've already reviewed a mid-level trim, the preferred with the trend package. Uh, so we've done that one as well. This one, again, is the essential package and it's the base model and I quite like it. I also quite like the new Santa Cruz, which I know a little bit about and the Santa Cruz is based off this. So I'm just excited about all this stuff. So anyways, I'm that nerd that likes cars and likes base model cars and I like telling you about them. So that's what we're gonna do. So if you wanna see the uh, content of this video, you can, and you're not live with us, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark. At the three minute mark, that's where we'll get going with uh, really into the content. We're gonna let our live audience build in the meantime. And if you wanna see how to join us with our live audience, I will show you how to do that right now. Oh, somebody just reminded me to get the teddy bear and I do need the teddy bear. I was just in a Kia marketing meeting type thing that, um, I was a part of and I did not grab Teddy. So we'll have to ask somebody to get that for us. Give me a second here. All right. First of all, if you want to join us live, you go to our channel, which you're probably already there. If you come here at two o'clock Eastern time in the afternoon, you refresh the channel, you are going to get right there, our live video on the home screen. Makes it super simple for you. We're going to click into that. You'll probably have to watch an ad. And while we're watching those ads, I'm going to quickly to remind you, if you are looking to buy a Kia or a Hyundai in Ontario, just connect with me. After this video is posted, you're gonna see a link below that says, contact me, connect with me. I'm gonna put you in touch with the sales team that will take care of you. They'll take care of you the same way I would. Uh, so Brantford Hyundai, Own Sound Hyundai, we've got a couple of Hyundai dealers and of course, Brantford Kia. We can take care of you um, and just connect with me. I'll make sure that they follow up and do what they need to do with you. So there we go. All right, so we're gonna jump through here. Let me just show you again, back to the screen. We've got our live comments there and they're building in. Somebody asked me a really good question. They says, is this a CUV or an SUV? Um, I will talk about that in just 10 seconds because it's that came up uh, just before the video. All right, what's going on in the news? We've got about 30, 40 seconds to kill. All right, so Kia, Kia World, let's talk, start there. Um, in Canada, they're changing logos, they're changing slogans, they're changing the overall look. And at least from a digital perspective, you're gonna start to see all of that around June 1st. So that's what the meeting I just came out of. A lot of cool stuff in there. I like what they're doing, say goodbye to red. Uh, say hello to black and white. So uh, that's really the main colors. There's some accent colors that they'll use. They'll still use some reds for some highlights, but essentially no more red. So that's the big news there. Uh, Hyundai news, I'm still hoping to get that Santa Cruz information. We'll probably do a video just on the information before, just frankly, because I like that car and I think you guys do as well. And we'll talk about that as well. All right, we hit the three minute mark. So here we go, let's get going. All right. First of all, somebody just asked, is this a CUV or an SUV? Is it a crossover utility vehicle or a sport utility vehicle? Hyundai itself? calls it a CUV, a crossover utility vehicle. Uh, I think the line has blurred pretty much. Uh, some people say a sport utility vehicle has to be a ladder on frame, but um, let's be honest, there's not a lot of those around. So I don't know what you call it, but what I call it is a really, really good mix of stuff. So it's got this styling that it seems controversial at first. I quite like it. The one weird thing for me though, is when I clean the car, I had to wipe this car dry a little bit. It was a little bit dirty and it's not perfect. Let's be really honest. Uh, but it's kind of weird uh, when you clean it because you've got so many of these sharp edges, which is uh, all one panel, but it's just, you know, quite a bit of uh, detail. It's just, it feels different than cleaning any other car. And I quite like it. I think it looks handsome in person. I don't know if handsome is something you're allowed to call a car these days, but uh, I think it does. So I, I like it, it works in person. I think sometimes uh, we've seen some, some in pictures where it doesn't look great. But let's talk about the base model here. For a base model, there's a couple things that have to go on. You have to make sacrifices. So a base model, base car, yeah, we know it's gonna have nothing, they're not fun to review. A base model, mid-level car, I love reviewing these. I love talking about them because they had to make decisions, right? They had to put, save some features for the high end, high cost. And they also had to cut out some things to keep the price at a certain price point to make it more entry level. Um, but I think this one kind of hits it perfectly for me. Keep in mind, there are cheaper cars than this and cheaper cars in the lineup. A Venue is, a, is an entry level crossover. Uh, you've got the Kona below this. So this is a step above those vehicles and it really hits the mark for me as far as what you should put into a base, le base model car at this level. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, we'll start with the inside. We're, we're going to work the way outside and I'm going to throw the spoiler alert right off the top. 
There is one feature I think they should have included that they did not, and you can see it up here. In fact, you can't see it up here. I think they should have put a roof rack up here. The marketing material for this car talks about how it's an adventure type vehicle. Uh, it gets you outdoors, that kind of thing. Roof racks are part of that for me. I'm a kayaker, I'm a biker, a camper, whatever. Uh, I like having a roof rack to throw stuff up there or at least the side rails so I have the option of putting a roof rack across. Other than that, I think they nailed this car. So let's go take a look at it first of all. All right, base model. We showed the Tucson a while ago and on my Instagram we did, and you can still see it on my Instagram account, uh, we showed the uh, forward and reverse, the smart park. You could move it forward and reverse from the key fob. You don't get that here. I don't think people expect that in a base model. The other thing you don't have is a push button start. I think that's okay. Um, again, they do cost a little bit uh, there. So um, you don't get that uh, push button start, which means you're gonna have to pull this key fob out of your pocket. It is a solid feeling jackknife style key. Goes down like that, pops out easily. Uh, so that's what you've got there. Okay, some people say they like the styling, some people say they don't, and that's okay. Kia will be coming out with a version of this uh, in the future. They're gonna put their new sports hall on this platform and it's gonna have different styling. So if you like the idea of this car, but not the styling, Kia is gonna have a version of it very soon. Okay, so let's jump in here. First of all, base model, no power seats. I expect that, I'm okay with that. Um, you do have nice comfortable seats that are cloth seats. They are height adjustable, that's what that does. Uh, pump it up and the seat comes up, push it down or pump it down and the seat goes down. They are quite comfortable. And one thing that's always been a frustration of mine, something like a Kia Forte, I'm from the Kia world originally, um, it always had soft touch armrests, but you get into the base level Sportage, it doesn't. Base level Tucson, it does. Soft touch armrests here, I think that matters. I think that's um, something at this price point you have to put in a car and they do. So that's uh, kudos to Hyundai for that. Now let's jump inside here. A lot that I like here. There's a lot, lot that I like here. Again, pretty good value for what you're getting in this car. So let's just start with taking a look at the, um, at the display screen here. So left side speedometer, right side, oh, yeah, left side speedometer, right side tachometer. Kind of a different style here. Hard to see on camera maybe, uh, very easy to see in person. So the fonts of course are staggered fonts, uh, 20s and 40s, so even, even tens are uh, larger than these smaller tens, uh, but easy to read, quite easy to see. And of course you do have the option of a digital speedometer in the center there. You don't have to put a um, put that on the speedometer in the center. So uh, whatever you wanna do. Interestingly that they have sent, basically flopped. A lot of our electronic uh, or full display screen type, type displays have moved this way as well. And in this case, the, um, the non, the analog display has also switched. In previous Hyundais, you'll see the uh, speedometer and tachometer were reversed sides. Why did they do that? I don't know. Uh, see the little blue lighting on the side there? We're gonna switch through drive modes on the either side. There's blue lighting, I don't know if you can see that. And we're gonna switch that right now. We're gonna go drive modes. Now it goes red as we're in sport mode. It goes to, uh, sorry, blue in normal and green in eco. If we go down the smart, is it the smart the same blue? Let me see that in real life. Uh, looks like it, smart. It looks like the same blue as normal, so that's interesting. Uh, eco there in the green, and again, sport in the red. So you do have an indication of what drive mode you're in uh, without reading that little uh, light at the bottom there, which will say sport, eco, we'll switch it through, smart. Uh, sorry, no eco, yes, eco there as well. So if it doesn't say, if it says normal, you don't know if you're in normal or smart. If it says smart, you'll know you're in smart, that kind of thing. So that is a logo there at the bottom, but you do have an indication of it on the left side. So again, just, again, smart, kind of nice, and very good information here. You've seen this in a lot of the Kia Hyundai vehicles if you've watched their stuff, tire pressure monitoring, um, you've got your lane follow assist, lane keep assist type uh, buttons here, uh, driver attention alert, so all good stuff. Uh, you know, kudos to giving them. You're essentially getting all the high-end stuff. Sometimes the higher-end cars have it in a little bit larger screen, but from an information perspective, again, when you're making those compromises, you're making some cuts at some point, this is good. You've got all the information, just maybe not on the biggest screen you could possibly have, and that's okay with me in a base model. One thing that I kind of agree with on a base model is this is essentially a urethane wheel, as I believe what they call it. It is a rubbery feeling wheel. It is not a leather wheel. Now that means it can't be heated. And again, base model has to make a cut somewhere. I like these wheels. I've always have. Um, you can see I wear a wedding ring that could maybe scratch leather. Um, I haven't done it on anybody else's car other than my personal car, but I have 
touched this in the wrong way on the leather and I've gotten very used to driving without rubbing my ring there. So this is just a more durable wheel. If you do a lot of driving, it feels nice in the hand. It's still got all the design of the proper higher end vehicle, including a lot of the buttons here, including lane follow assist uh, with your cruise control. So I like this um, layout here. This actual little rim here, when I set my elbow on that uh, soft armrest over here, and I reach over to the wheel, it just kind of falls perfectly to that extra little rim, which is usually up or down here, right? It's down like this. Uh, I like it out here. It's a practical wheel in addition to just being, um, you know, a stylish wheel. And again, large nubs here, which makes it easy to grip and steer. So again, urethane, some people like the... Um, leather this one won't have that and i'm okay with that as a compromise because again you can always get that leather heated steering wheel when you move up a trim all right so take a look we'll come back to some of these safety features in a minute we'll talk about safety somebody asked about uh, lane keep or um, blind spot detection we'll talk about that in a second when we talk about safety features hey there i am in the reflective section of the piano black trim now our audience has a pretty strong opinion about piano black trim i am not as worried about it as they are some people think this is bad for fingerprints now my argument would be for whatever reason, this modern piano black trim isn't bad for fingerprints. You can see I'm placing my fingerprints on it, dragging it. Um, it doesn't seem to be fingerprint prone, even though it is piano black. It does give a little bit of class to the interior here. I think when you get in this car, you're not going to feel base model in any way. You've got a nice little piano black trim down there. It's outlined in silver. Uh, overall look and feel of this car is not base model-ish. We take a look here at the... Um, center console nice stitched area so again some people like love the piano black that's what we're hearing now i I, don't, I like it as well if the alternative is a flat plain plastic uh, which this again has a little bit of rubbery to it but if the alternative is a flat plastic the piano black i think is nice now base model car apple carplay and android auto yeah that's common however this is wireless. It's uh, You do not have to plug your phone in. I think that's a real game changer. I think that should be included in every car now because we can do it. Uh, so it is wireless Android Auto in here, and it's um, very, very nice because what happens is, practically speaking, when you're driving the car, you don't have navigation in here, uh, but all of a sudden you get a call from someone and it's like, oh, I'll meet you at XYZ. Oh, shoot, where's XYZ again? So you can, t you can speak to Siri or you can speak to Google. You can call them up and you can, like, call it up on your phone essentially and get the navigation brought up through apple maps google maps whatever it is and you do that wirelessly and that is something that um, i think people don't understand how nice that is when you don't have to plug it in you just do that you keep your phone in your purse pocket wherever it is or you can set it down here there's a spot for it right there no wireless charging in this car for your phone again base model you're making compromises i would rather have wireless android auto and apple carplay over the wireless charger than the wireless charger over wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That's my personal opinion, because I think um, if I need to charge my phone in the day, I can plug it in. But what happens is you, you end up in a busy day, you also need something called up on here, and you can now do that, um, and that's helpful. So, coming down here, gear shift. Again, we saw a little different one in like the uh, Elantra N-Line, but the Elantra and the Tucson use the same gear shift. It's got this nice little piano black trim, nice little metal. Again, higher end feel, no leather on top. Same feeling as the steering wheel, that rubbery type feeling. Uh, again, doesn't look cheap or feel cheap to me. Some of you say you want leather, and that's okay. You can get that, you just have to move up. Nice little rubber feel down here. This mat is removable. I can pull that up. You can see it's a little plugged in there. So again, when all your junk gets dirty in there, um, and I don't think I put it down quite properly. There we go. Um, when all your stuff gets dirty, you can clean that out, which is pretty easy. So again, 12-volt port, 12-volt port, or sorry, excuse me, USB port, USB port, 12-volt port in the center behind the door. That's the right mix to me as well. Throw the car in reverse for a second. Every car has a backup camera. This one's got a really good one, and I say really good one because... I think what's happened in these more modern vehicles is they've given them a little bit of a wider angle. I never remember being able to see that door when I parked these cars in similar spots every time. So uh, you've got a better wider angle backup camera here. That's really good. It's also very clear. When I'm filming a screen, I shouldn't be able to see the floor that clearly. And you really can't on some of these non-Kia Hyundai products, including higher-end vehicles. Uh, excellent backup camera is something to keep in mind. Down here... You do not have automatic climate control. Again, not something I want in a base model. I want to sacrifice that price point because as long as I have air conditioning, I can put the air where I need it. I'm totally fine with that. The fan speed, very easy to adjust. Blows very hard. You can hear that 
blowing uh, quite solid. These vents look small, but they move a ton of air. So uh, really good job there. Uh, simple, easy to use. And of course you have the air conditioning there. Coming down here, it is an all wheel drive model. First of all, it's an eight speed automatic transmission. When you throw it in drive, you can tap it this way and you can shift your own gears if you want, eight different gears. Uh, you only can tow about 2,000 pounds. Now I say only, that's, you know, that's a small tent trailer. So that's, you're capable of taking this vehicle tent, tent trailer camping, utility trailer for sure, even utility trailer camping, if you wanna do something like that. Uh, but you have enough towing capacity there. But again, having that ability to choose your own gears, sometimes in that situation can matter. You do have some nice buttons here. Hill descent control, they're popping. Again, excuse the dirt in this car. This car was not fully detailed. Uh, you may see some there. But hill descent control is a bit of an off-road thing. Auto hold is electronic parking brake. Sometimes you don't see those. I don't need this in the car, but it does clean up the interior and keeps my feet free if it's a foot brake instead. A little parking button or a P button is your... Um, is your backup camera now and uh which is kind of nice and we're gonna show you one more thing on that in a second drive modes are right here tap up and down again they show display they display in the dash for what's there drive modes should be next to the gear shift in my opinion uh the elantra n line yesterday didn't have that and that's okay but i think it's just logically speaking that's where it should be and you've got the um auto start stop so when you come to a stop sign if the car's warmed up uh climate system's not blasting like crazy the car will turn itself off it does save you some fuel if you don't want that to happen you can do that i do quite like this in our kia hyundai vehicles right now uh some of our competitive brands have a real delay it's not a nice feature it's very intuitive works well here and you're saying where are the heated seats well so was i no problem they're right back here so three levels of heat seated heats in the driver and passenger seats and again when you're getting cloth seats and you're getting heated seats they heat up faster, they work well. Um, so very warm seats in this car, if that's what you want. So you lose the heat of steering wheel and that's okay. That's a sacrifice I think a lot of people are willing to make, but you get that. So we'll keep going here. One thing I wanted to show you was that um, the backup camera again. When you pull up the backup camera, you have some options here. Oops, if I tap the screen again, you can look straight down the back and this line here, if you do have a hitch on this car, you can hitch this car yourself. You can just see a little bit of gray at the very bottom here. That is your bumper. And you can really put that hitch right up towards uh, where you need to go uh, dead smack on. So that's kind of a nice feature that not everybody sees. And of course you do have some settings here to turn things on and off, um, display settings. You can change the brightness, the contrast and uh, brightness at night, those kinds of things. So you have the ability to change that setting. Uh, if you tap that screen and play with it. Something that not everybody knows about, and I think that's important to do. All right, lights turned off in this room, but that's okay, we'll keep going here. Let's talk safety features, and then we'll take questions. Real quick, safety features. Lane keep and lane follow assist. So, behind your mirror here, you have a camera looking forward. That's going to be collision avoidance stuff. It's going to see um, vehicles in front of you, and it's capable of stopping the car uh, before it hits them. Very good safety feature to have. Not something you get in every base level car, and they keep it in here. And this lane keep assist, so lane follow assist. So a lot of the vehicles will have the ability to steer your car centered in a lane, but really just touches the lane markers, that kind of thing. Lane follow assist, it, it, uh, lane keep assist works above 60 kilometers an hour. Lane follow assist, which is what this button is here, works below 60 kilometers an hour. It can use others uh, extra visual cues to keep you centered in the lane. If you're going on a long trip, having this car, um, stay centered in the lane just takes the stress out of driving it's definitely something worth having um, and you do include it so again something i really like here another thing i really like here they have this extra star button here you have one on the steering wheel and you have one over here that can call up various things for you uh, depending on what you want i use this one in my car to call up android auto apple carplay um, you can do whatever you want with this car turn the camera back on you can tap it by doing here there's a lot of ways to do that but that is something that is nice to have as a customizable feature because essentially that means all of your controls are right here not everybody likes these touch buttons but you really are never going to use the touch button. you're never going to switch between radio and media there because you're just going to switch the mode button here and you can switch the mode what it does up stuff so again some of these non-touch button type things how many of us really tune our radio very few of us right we just use our presets which you can cycle through from the wheel on your car so very nice uh feature set there we'll talk more about actually you know what we'll just jump in here for a quick second show you some of the menu items uh there's a quiet mode which means you can mute the back speakers and just keep the music quietly in the front so if you have kids sleeping in the back or if you have kids that play their own music in the back that can work as well here as uh, muting the rear speakers and just playing your music on the front speakers. If we go to the setup, we'll go to the vehicle setup here as well. Um, 
So this is the vehicle here. You can just see there's a custom button. You can change some stuff in there. Wi-Fi is the key to making wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay work. All right, let's jump out for a second and turn the key off. We're going to talk about those LED headlights in a second. You can sort of see them there. Uh, really something else I really recommend getting on this car. But let's take your questions first, and then we'll keep going through and show you some more features. Somebody just walked in. No? Oh, maybe not. I was going to ask them for my teddy bear, but we may have to go with that ourselves. Gabby, if you're watching, can you get my teddy bear for me? That would be helpful. She may not be watching. Okay, so he says, must be enjoying the new car smell. All right, so let's see. Somebody says, looks really nicely equipped for a base model. And again, I love talking about base models because this is not a the entry level vehicle, right? It's a mid-level base level car. So you kind of have to mix and match stuff. And again, for 27-ish thousand dollars, just over that, plus freight and air and all those kinds of things, 27 plus MSRP. There's a ton of value here and there's space. We talk about um, the Kona or the Seltos. They are smaller vehicles than these than this car. So you're getting a lot of that space that you want. Okay, questions. Teddy's out to lunch again. Yeah, you know what? I had a meeting before here and I didn't grab Teddy before we go. So he says, drop a like for Peter. And I would appreciate that. There's 29 of you on right now. 16 of you have said, yes, this guy's worth spending the effort to hit that little like button. Um, I'm not asking for much. I'll spend a half an hour. I'm asking for a split second of your time for that like. That would be super helpful. Uh, let's set a pretty low goal. Let's just try to get to 30 today. All right. Infotainment reminds me of 2017 to 2020 Rogue. Oh, okay. Interesting. Hasn't got uh, wireless car play in that car. How soon can we get this car? Today. This car is for sale at both of our dealers, Owen Sound Hyundai and Brantford Hyundai today. I pulled this from Brantford Hyundai today to our studios here at Brantford Kia, and that's where I'm filming it. Um, electronic parking brake in the base model. Wow, yeah, exactly. Not something I expected. Wind wiper de-icer like the 2021 Tucson. Uh, I believe it has that, but I'm not 100% sure, and I don't have the right spec sheet here, so I'll have to double check on that one on this trim level. Um, there we go. Uh, is there any other questions here? Okay, let's just keep going. So let's take a look at the front end of the car for a second here. One thing that's a little different, again, base model, you've seen on the Santa Cruz, you've seen on the um, uh, Tucson advertisements, this idea of this daytime running lights in uh, sort of white that come through the grill. Now, uh, you can see they're lit here. They don't show very well on camera for whatever reason. They just don't show the, you know, the, the brightness exactly. But when you turn the lights off, they disappear. And I'm going to do that for just a second. Let me just play with this here. All right, so when we turn them off, on the higher trim levels, they blend into the grill because you can see this is kind of a grayed, almost a mirror finish type thing. Here, they are clear. So they don't quite blend in quite to the level that the higher trim levels do. And if you're wondering why on some cars they seem to be completely blending into the grill and some cars they don't, it's just the trim level. These are not tinted the same way they are on the higher trim level. And I don't think that matters at all to most people. It still at night looks really cool and mostly it blends in, but it blends in a little bit more on the higher trim levels. Your headlights are down here and they are LED headlights. And you hear me on this channel talk a lot. If you can spring for the LED headlights, go for it. Something like a Kia Celto, something like a Kona, something like those smaller SUVs, well equipped with options and again, you're going to get probably more options for the same price in those cars. However, you're not getting LED lights unless you pay extra on those cars, whereas this one, every trim level has it. Another thing I like about this car, and this seems a little silly, as an outdoorsy person, you've got these tires. A lot of vehicles are now going with the large rim and small sidewall. This is something that you're going to take camping. You're going to take everywhere. You're going to take, you know, as an outdoor adventure type kind of vehicle, they are still good sized tires, but you have a lot more sidewall. And if you do go off road on cottage roads, sharp, um, you know, sharp uh, potholes on those dirt roads, that kind of thing, you've got a little bit extra ride assistance by having a little extra sidewall, which is nice. You're not going to blow that out. The other thing is if you are a former um, Tucson or Tucson, if you are a former Santa Fe owner, your, your doors on the Santa Fe wrap around. The Tucson never used to do that. Here, you've got that wrap around. And what that means is when you get out of these taller vehicles, sometimes you wipe your pant leg along this section right here. And if that wasn't covered, like it is here on the door, this would be dirty and your pant leg would get dirty. So again, taller vehicle, your pant leg isn't gonna get dirty because the door wraps right around. So just a simple little feature that they design in the vehicle makes a lot of sense. All right, teddy bear didn't show up yet, so I'm gonna go grab him for a quick second. Let's just make sure nobody's out here. 
Bear with me for one second. There he is. And nobody else is here. All right. Okay, so we're going to get Teddy Bear here. Here he is. So if you've never seen one of our videos before, you have no idea why I just grabbed a massive teddy bear. Well, teddy bear is my trunk measurement tool. And he's useful because there's a good size trunk in this vehicle. Now, you can see the backup cameras right there. The handle is down here. Sometimes it's, uh, people are used to being, it being under the logo. We'll talk about the logo in a second. In the trunk of this vehicle, it's just flat out massive for the size of the vehicle. It is, whoops, front license plate frame. That was with the uh, thing, <laughs> thing, that was that smack. We're good. All right, so leave that there. So this floor here, if I lift up, you can see you do have a spare tire. Not every base model has a spare tire these days. I'm pulling this out, I'm dropping it down. You gain a little bit of storage. Now, do you gain a lot? Oops, I can't quite get it down. I'm left-handed, I'm right-handed. You can see you gain a couple inches of storage. Is it worth dropping it down? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, and something like uh, some of our other cars, you gain a lot more depth, but you still have the ability to drop it just a little bit to get a little bit more storage. If I was doing this with both hands, right hand, it'd be a little better. This is a very large and thick panel. And again, even with it at its top position, just a massive trunk. So let's throw Teddy Bear in here because compared to the old Tucson, you're gaining a lot of space, a whole lot of space. So there's rumors that this vehicle was capable of putting a third row seat in here, and I think that's very true. Even when Teddy's between the wheel wells, you can see Teddy has a ton of room, a ton of space above, ton of space around, and a lot of the SUVs that we look at, you know, soon after Teddy Bear, Teddy's tummy is usually touching the side uh, or the back of the seat here, and then usually around here or so is where we run out of space, but we've got a lot more space here. You could almost fit two Teddies side by side in this trunk, and of course, you can stack them pretty high. So if you are looking for a good value SUV and space is of the essence, in other words, I want more space in my SUV, more room in my SUV, then this is one that makes a ton of sense because Teddy is not only comfortable back there, but he's just, you know, he could have a friend back there. Another nice little touch, pull that lever to fold those seats down. Why is that nice? Because I almost can't, well, in fact, I can't, Okay, I can just barely touch that seat. I can almost not reach that seat. So having that pull down here is really nice. And again, that just shows you how much space. Somebody made a good point. I always talk about camping because I'm an outdoors person. 12 volt port back here if you want to use like a 12 volt cooler. However, somebody said, hey, if I want to put a um, dash cam on the back of my vehicle, that's a really convenient port to have there as well. So uh, if, some, if you are a dash cam type, type person, they said I should point that out. And I thought, yeah, that's a good point. So again, lots of space back here. Now let's jump in the back seat because you're probably gonna take some family in here. This one does not have the power uh, drop tailgate or the button to push. You can see on the higher trim levels, you would have a button there. It doesn't have it here. I don't think you need that when you have to make compromises. Now, speaking of compromises, one thing they didn't compromise on, on these new um, SUVs, the new Sorento, the new Santa Fe, the new Tucson, they've gotten rid of the wiper down here and they've put it up underneath the, um, underneath the spoiler up there. So you can't even see it. Now there is a setting where you can just get it to drop down so you can change the wiper out, but that does a couple things for you. One, it cleans up the back here. Even this logo is behind the glass. So everything's smooth back here, but you also don't have snow and ice sitting on top of that, getting cold and hot, cold and hot, and cold and hot up here as everything drips down and then refreezes on the wiper. And then the first time you go to use it, you break your wiper blade. It's all hidden, it's protected, it's kept out of the dust. It's gonna last longer, it's gonna be out of the sun, which also helps it. And it's just a cleaner look. So great job putting that wiper up top. It's a good idea. A lot of you also like the shark fin antenna and you have that as well. So pretty good base model car. Now let's jump in here, down, down here. That's where you have the hard, um, uh, armrest. So again, they spent the time and effort putting them in the front seats. They didn't have to, but to me that makes it nicer. And again, from the front seat of this vehicle, it does not feel like a base model. Let's watch myself get in. I'm six feet tall. I know, how is it to get in? Easy. Lots of room. Now, you can see, uh, maybe you can't see, I'm a little upright, a little far forward. Well, that's another thing that's nice about base models. Whoa, look at this. I am way leaned back here. Now, let me see if I can get you to this side here. If you look past my shoulder, that's in front of my shoulder. The amount of recline here in this seat is a lot. So you've got this 
that reclines a long ways. And what's interesting to me, for whatever reason, the 60-40 split is different than on the previous year models. I'm in the 40 side, which is on the driver's side. Usually this is the 60 side. So um, you've got an armrest here as well. That comes down and it's got, uh, ooh, let's just flip the camera around. Well, oh, that's not what I want to do. Let's try it back again this way. All right, got the armrest there. Again, this seat is far, fairly far forward. So this would be a little bit uh, tilted back if we tilted it properly. Um, the seat is square for cargo space right now. Again, put a box in, along the back there, it'd be good. But you have things like the cup holders in here. One thing you don't have back here is no vents, no ports, and that's okay. Again, base model car, not a big deal. You do have pockets on both sides though. So that's something that's uh, worth pointing out uh, if you wanna put your kids' devices back there for a long trip, pockets on both sides. So, all right, 38 people are currently on. We're gonna have three, 400 people easily on this at some point during the live video. I was aiming for the low bar of 30 likes. The other day we aimed for 60 and got there. Um, if you 38 all hit the like button, we're gonna blow past 50 likes, I promise you. We'll try it. Give it a try. I'd like to get to 30. All right, so there's sort of the basic view. There's me in the back seat, the trunk space, the front side. I'm gonna take your questions out. There's something else you wanna see. Uh, I do wanna show you the headlights. Let me just show you that real quickly. And um, because I think that matters on this car. I think, um, oops, there we go. Turn the lights on. In fact, we'll show you all the lights, including the signal lights. All right, LED lights, you can see them there. Sharp cutoff, hard to see the sharp cutoff again with the sort of uh, door there, it's just not the best uh, thing, but you have them low in the car. So when you have really bright lights and they're set low like this, because that's your headlights, not up here, that's down there, uh, which I'll show you right now. When they're low like that, they're very rarely in someone's way. They're uh, very rarely something that distracts people. And you also have the LED signals out front. So full LED lighting in the daytime running lights, the signal lights, and in the headlights out front, which is again, not something you'd always expect. No, sig no signal lights in the mirrors right there, so no big deal. Down here, out back, tail lights are up here. Not the LED lights that we showed you in the other trim lines, but still a nice uh, look. The higher trim line will have that line across. You don't have that, and that's okay. The signal lights are down there. Now, some of you feel like this is controversial to have the signal lights right down there. First of all, I guarantee you, if there's a light blinking, you know which vehicle it's attached to. For you to not be able to see this because of the hood of your car, you would have to be so close to you that you're just way, way, way too close. So some people think they're too low and you can't see them, but maybe when you're stopped, if you have a tall hooded vehicle and you're right up close, uh, when you're driving, which is when you need to see the signals, you're easily gonna see those. You're gonna be fine. Um, they pass and exceed safety standards, I'm sure. That's why they're able to put them out. So um, just be aware. Some people don't like that because they feel like it's a safety issue. It's just not. So uh, there we go. Let me see if I can take your questions now. Again, size point of this vehicle, features of this vehicle, the only thing I, wait, I would like to see on the base model that they don't have is the, um, is the uh, roof rack. I think they should put that on a vehicle like this. Somebody wanted to see the engine bay, so I'm gonna show them that. I'm just gonna turn the car off while we do that, and then I'll take some more questions and we'll go through. Feel free to ask your questions right now. Uh, if you're first time with us, there's no harm in being uh, first time asking a question. I'll do my best to answer it, and if I miss it, I apologize. Look at Teddy just laying there on the floor. Yeah, well, Teddy's had a rough day. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to do this all with one hand. I'm gonna set my camera down for just one second here on the engine bay, hopefully it doesn't fall. All right, what does the engine bay look like? A lot of space out here. So um, four cylinder engine, eight speed, 187 horsepower. You guys are gonna ask me the torque number. I believe it's 170 something. Uh, sorry guys, I forgot that. I was gonna look that up right before we started when I just slipped my mind. So no ambient lighting, no. This is a base model. And uh, frankly, at a base model, I wouldn't want that in a base model. I wouldn't wanna pay for that. Uh, I would want other features instead. So there's your uh, engine bay there. So lots of space around the engine. Why is the red on the floor? Don't know. Uh, not sure if I'm being trolled or not. I'll find out. What price after tax? on-road price. So that's a great question. And that's why if you want to know after tax on the road price and you're in Ontario, connect with me after this video, I will send you to our sales team. They'll get you all the pricing. They can do all that for you. No problem. All right. Got some trolls on. We're going to get rid of you in a second. Okay. What have we got out here? Base lights look worse than the LED ones. Okay. Some people don't like them. That's cool. 
And what else have we got? Why are most dealerships selling certain vehicles? Okay, so somebody asked a really great question. Why are vehicles selling? Why are some dealers selling vehicles significantly above MSRP? First of all, our dealers don't do that. They just don't. Uh, it's MSRP. There's uh, you know the standard fees which they will explain to you, but there is not above dealer stuff. I know that happens in the states a lot. Uh, it does not happen with Brantford Hyundai, Brantford Kia or Owen Sound Hyundai. So that's a question that you'd have to ask those dealers that are charging you that much money. Some people think if there's low availability, they can make more money. Doesn't happen with our dealer group, promise you that. Uh, put the wiper hidden on top. Yep, wipers are hidden up top there. <laughs> Good space for two boxes of Twinkies, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're referring to Kia, you live in Alberta. Yeah, it doesn't happen with our dealer group uh, here. So there we go. Trailblazer from Chevrolet is above $38,000. Yeah, it is. Now, again, this car can go over above $40,000 as well, but we showed that the other day. When you get above $40,000 in a car like this, uh, you're getting a hybrid vehicle with more power. So the way they add power on those trim levels here um, is as you move up, instead of adding a turbo engine, which is what we used to do on a lot of our cars, uh, in this case, the Tucson, they add a hybrid engine. So now you're getting electrified power, which increases the horsepower and the torque and decreases your fuel usage. And then you can go to a PHEV, PHEV um, so this one's not a hybrid, just so we're clear. Somebody said, yes, this is a hybrid. This one's not a hybrid, but when you move up, instead of getting a turbo, they're adding a hybrid. Electric motors have instant torque and they add horsepower that way. Sometimes we think of hybrids as being kind of boring and slow to drive. They're using the electric motors to add power and efficiency when you move up. And that's a great thing. And then you can add more power and more efficiency when you get the plug-in hybrid versions of these, which we haven't reviewed yet, but we will. All right, so looks great. Plenty to offer from base model. It really is. So I think what we're gonna do, we hit our 30 likes, wheel size. Somebody said the wheel size are 17 inch on this with a good size sidewall. So 235, 65, 17 right there. Uh, on the base level, I like having some sidewall if I'm gonna go off road somewhere. Uh, but yeah, that's what's going on there. So I think we're gonna leave it there guys. I wanna thank everyone for watching. Uh, we might do Kia tomorrow night, might do Hyundai. We're gonna take your suggestion. I could do either one tomorrow. Uh, somebody said hit that like button for Peter. I fully agree with that. Do me a favor, hit the like button before we hang up here. Uh, but we're back every single day at two o'clock. If you wanna see more Tucsons, we're gonna have more in here. We can pull the same car back in here next week. There's no, nothing limiting us from pulling in these cars again. So thank you for watching. Uh, I do wanna say I'm a big, big fan of this car. If you're interested in it, connect, especially in Ontario, connect with me, I'll set you up. We can take a look at that. Uh, really good car here that we're looking at. And again, great base model. So do a higher trim Tucson? We will. We already did the ultimate. We'll do more Tucsons in the future as well. Uh, they've been popular, so we'll continue to putting them on here. Uh, and like I said, if you have questions and you're not watching live with us, let us know. Will pricing for the Santa Cruz be similar? I don't have Santa Cruz pricing. Uh, it will start above this. Uh, from what I understand, the trim level, even the base trim level will start above this. It's gonna have a different engine. It's gonna have a 2.5 liter turbo engine. Um, which is gonna be a lot more power in Canada. So it does not have the base model engine that it has in the States, the two Santa Cruz. Uh, we will do a Santa Cruz video very soon. Uh, as soon as I get the full internal documents, we'll go through them. It's gonna be like 50, 60, 70 pages sometimes, uh, but we'll go through some of that so we can tell you what's coming. You can pre-order the Santa Cruz now. You can pre-order or even order or walk out today with this Tucson, but if you want to order um, something like Santa Cruz, connect with me, I'll connect you with their sales team um, and I'll put you with people that you can trust and take care of you. All right, we've gone way over time today. We'll have another one of these back here again in the future. I want to thank everyone for watching and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.